Understanding the Gleason Score in Prostate Cancer. This is one of a series of cancer videos that can be accessed from the website about cancer or directly from my YouTube site as noted here. How serious is prostate cancer? Well, it depends on both anatomy and biology. Anatomy means how advanced is the cancer, the stage, based on the size, location of the tumor, possible spread to nodes or distant sites. This is evidence you get from x-rays or scans. How much cancer in the body. This is how you get evidence from the PSA blood test. Is there a lot of cancer or not? And finally, how malignant are mutated are the cancer cells, the grade or the Gleason score. This information you get from the pathology report or the pathologist examining the cancer under a microscope. So, confused about Gleason, they recently changed the Gleason grade and score to something called the grade group. So, I'll go through what these three things mean and see if I can clarify this. All cancer starts as a normal cell that mutates and becomes malignant. The traditional way to classify malignant cells or the biology for years was simply a pathologist looking at the cells under a microscope and describing how mutated the cells look compared to normal cells. This was called the grade. This will eventually be replaced by a genetic or genomic analysis. But for now, the grade is still commonly used. The traditional classification was to grade them well, moderate, or poorly differentiated. A well-differentiated cancer, the cells almost looked normal and had a very high cure rate. If it was moderately differentiated or medium differentiated, they were somewhat more abnormal looking, but still had a favorable cure rate. And it was only the cells that were very poorly differentiated, very abnormal looking, that the patient had a low cure rate. This was replaced eventually by Gleason. Gleason was a pathologist who, instead of three groups, came up with five patterns, as noted here. The Gleason pattern one was very well differentiated, and two or three became more moderately differentiated, and a Gleason four and five were more poorly differentiated or abnormal. Then Gleason came up with a scoring system. From the biopsy, the pathologist grades the cells from one to five based on how mutated they look, and the first number is written down. That's the most common pattern seen. Then he grades it a second time. The second number is the second most common pattern, and these numbers will then be added up to generate a Gleason score. The lowest possible score, obviously, 1 plus 1 or 2. The worst score would be a 5 plus 5 or 10. That would be the fastest growing or the most dangerous or the most mutated cancer and would have the highest or worst Gleason score. The higher the Gleason score, the lower the cure rates. In this graph showing the survival with surgery, a Gleason 6 has a very good 5 and 10 year survival, but by Gleason 7 it's lower and by a Gleason score of 8 it's much lower. There's similar data for radiation as this graph shows. Again, the higher the Gleason score, the lower the cure rate. So confused about Gleason, again, the Gleason grade or pattern is simply a number from one to five based on how mutated the cells look under the microscope. The Gleason score is degraded twice and add the score up to generate a number between two and 10. And then recently the grade group and basically, this is to go back to a total grade group of only five. And basically, what they did is shown here. A Gleason score of five or lower is basically ignored. A Gleason six is now grade one. They separated three plus four is now grade two. Four plus three is now grade group three. And as noted, the eights and tens are grade group four and five. The gray groups have been shown to predict overall outcome. And again, as shown on this chart, the higher the gray group, the lower the cure rate. It's necessary to understand these gray groups because they're used in the new staging system. So for instance, if you had three people with the same tumor size or stage and the same lymph node stage and the same PSA stage, 
but a different grade group. It would move them into a different overall stage as shown here. It's also necessary to understand the new grade group because it's used in the NCCN prognostic groups, National Comprehensive Cancer Network, and as shown here on this table, the gray groups figure significantly into each of these risk groups. And it's by putting the patient into these risk groups that predicts what type of treatment is really necessary or appropriate. So finally, what else can you learn from the Gleason score? Well, it turns out it will predict the odds that the cancer has already spread to other structures. It will predict the odds or probability of a relapse and it will predict the risk of the patient ever dying of prostate cancer. All of these obviously very important. There are online medical calculators. These can be accessed simply from my website about cancer.com as noted. There's a whole section on prostate calculators. If you go to the Memorial Sloan Kettering one, for instance, and use the calculator to predict what's the odds the cancer will have spread based on the Gleason, you can see from this table, if the Gleason score gets higher, the probability that the cancer is still confined to the gland, organ confined, gets lower. The reason it gets lower, as you note here on the next page, the risk of extra capsular spread gets higher, the higher the Gleason, meaning the cancer has broken through the wrapper or capsule of the gland. The risk that the cancer has already gotten into the lymph nodes is higher. As noted here, it jumps from 3% up to 27% just based on the Gleason. And the odds that the cancer is already invaded at the structure called the seminal vesicle gets higher the higher the Gleason. The calculators also will predict the odds of a relapse. This is from the Johns Hopkins calculator. And uh, this table shows nicely how PSA and Gleason are both important. A PSA of 4 to 10, but a higher Gleason will push the probability of a relapse up to 37%. If the PSA is higher, those numbers go up. If the PSA is over 20, they go substantially higher. So they're both combined. Perhaps more important is the risk of dying of prostate cancer, as this also from back the memorial calculator. A high Gleason would predict a 71% risk of a relapse but fortunately, the risk of dying of prostate cancer, even by 15 years, is only 8%. Generally, patients can have a PSA relapse, but not die of the disease. If we go to the calculator and change the PSA to a higher number, say 25, the risk of a relapse goes up even higher. Now we're up to 80%. But fortunately, the risk of dying of prostate cancer is still low, even in the worst group here, only 8%. If everything goes wrong, and the cancer has been found to have invaded into the seminal vesicles and the lymph nodes and has a high Gleason and has a high PSA of 25, then the risk of dying does go up significantly and now has moved from 8% to 36%. So this calculator alone would show you the importance of all three things, the PSA, the level of spread, and the level of mutation or the Gleason grade or score. Finally, it's likely that genomic or genetic testing will replace grading. As I dictate this in 2019, there are more and more sites that will give you genomic testing. Decipher is a popular site. You could ask your pathologist to have your biopsies sent out for a decipher biopsy report, and it would tell you whether you have a favorable prognosis and a low likelihood of requiring any treatment or a high decipher risk which would give you an unfavorable prognosis and may predict the need to get some more intensive therapy. According to Decipher's website, Decipher predicts the risk of a relapse or mutation better than the other guidelines that have been used. Finally, there are more uh, studies from Decipher, such as this. A low risk score would predict a low risk that the cancer is high Gleason, a very low risk of metastases, and a low risk of ever dying of this cancer, at least by 10 years, 1.9%. On the other hand, a high-risk decipher score may push these numbers up substantially and a 10-year risk of dying of prostate cancer all the way up to 12%. There are more studies like this published in 2018 that combine the genetic or genomic score, decipher, 
along with the more traditional scoring systems such as Stage and Gleason, and to put patients into a more detailed simple category is noted here low risk, intermediate, or high risk, and give you a simpler prediction of mortality. Well, how does this help, you might ask? Well, if the combined predictor now has a low risk of mortality only 2%, you may very well feel comfortable not recommending any treatment at all and avoiding all the risk of side effects and the expense. If it calculates a 10.7% mortality at 10 years, you may decide based on the patient's age, health, and life expectancy to either push the treatment more aggressively or not. And then certainly if the patient has a high risk chance of dying of this disease, you may want to consider even more intensive treatment, such as including chemotherapy along with surgery or radiation. So finally, how serious is prostate cancer? All of these things are important. The anatomy, the staging, the PSA level, and definitely the Gleason score or the grade or how mutated the cells. And again, depending on when you look at this video, genomics or genetic testing may trump this altogether. Everything that I've shown here can be found on the website as well as the calculators as well as other videos on prostate cancer.